This next video is going to supplement our previous video that were focused on basic regular exp expressions and their use with the grep tool by extending to the egrep tool, which is uh, which allows us to actually use extended regular expressions. So there are a little bit of differences. There are syntactical difference between basic regular expression and extended regular expression, and there are also new uh, syntax that is av available to us when you use extended regular expression. So this slide should give you an overview of the difference between the two. Okay, So let's take a look together. Um, the first thing I would like to point out is that we have the same uh, curly brace repeating patterns that we had previously with uh, basic regular expression. However, you will note that we do not need any more to backslash uh, the curly braces. So that makes for a notation that's a lot easier on the eyes, okay? Regular expressions suddenly uh, become a lot more readable because of that. Similarly, uh, we talked about the, the syntax, the parenthesis space syntax to capture groups. In regular, um, in basic regular expressions, we add to backslash the parenthesis, okay? Here we do not have to. So that means also that parenthesis and uh, a curly brace are special symbols, right? So if you want to match them directly in the text, then you will have to backslash them. Okay, I want to make that very clear. So these are the, the little modification of syntax that are actually going in the right direction, making the, the regular expression more easy to read, easier to read. Now, uh, we still have the star symbol, which means repeat zero or more times. But we have also two additional symbols that are uh, making it simpler to express repeating uh, basic repeating patterns. The question mark is going to repeat whatever uh, capturing group or regular expression is uh, before it zero or one time. So it's used for optional things, okay? Um, and then the plus pattern repeats one or more times. So star, star repeats zero or more times, plus repeats at least one or more times. So star is optional or repeated arbitrary number of time, plus requires at least one occurrence. And the uh, question mark is just optional. It's there or it's not there. Um, so this this is it pretty much for as far as, as uh, the repeating patterns are concerned. Now we have something new in extended uh, regular expression, uh, which is alternatives. Okay, so I'm going to explain that on an example. Uh, but first, let's go through uh, making sure that we are comfortable with those uh, repeating patterns. So let's go back to our terminal and our example here. Uh, let's take we're going to use e grep, okay, or grep dash uppercase e would work too. Uh, this is a way to say that we want to use extended uh, regular expressions. So I'm going to use egrep here, and I'm going to say, for example, um, I want to, let's say, repeat else digit. <coughs> and I want an optional digit. So I'm willing to match else followed by a digit, or else not followed by a digit. Okay, so you can see how this is working here. Watch out those lines here. It looks like a big block of red, but it's really one match followed by another separate match followed by another independent match. Okay, so you can see that I'm accepting, you know, uh, at most one digit. So three five nine, for example, only the threes match five nines are ignored, uh, but I'm accepting also zero digits after the else, as you can see on the all those examples here at the beginning. So that's an optional uh, repeating pattern, I would say. I would call it like that. Now I can say I want zero. Uh, or one, which is equivalent to a question mark, or more. So then I move to star. Let's take a look. So you can see now that three five nine was matched. Okay. So I accepted else plus a three, a five, and a nine. So that's three digits. But I accept also zero. So zero, one, two, three digits, uh, up to n digits arbitrary would be accepted. And the last one that we talked about was a plus. So let's illustrate how it works. Okay. Uh, this this time, sorry, <coughs> I require at least one digit, right? Up to an arbitrary number of digits, so three, five, nine. So those patterns are really uh, syntactic uh, sugar. They are uh, an easier way to write things that we could otherwise otherwise uh, write, you know, just using the basic uh, repeating pattern with the curly brace. So let's use a few of those basic repeating patterns just to confirm to you that we don't need to backslash them anymore. So I'm going to do grab and I'm going to use a repeating pattern here and I'm going to say I want to repeat it three times and there we go so I'm repeating three times uh, a digit after else 
another thing we can take a look at while we are there is um, let's say that I have here a curly brace around three. Actually, let's use else. Which we beat so much everywhere that it's a great uh, example here. So I'm putting a curly brace around else. So if I want to match this, uh, my point here is that uh, I want to show you what happens when you just write the curly brace. Okay, so the opening curly brace is actually considered uh, the beginning of a repeating pattern. And then you do not specify anything that looks like a repeating pattern. So egrep tries to still make sense of what you are specifying. So it, uh, it skips matching the opening curly brace because it thought it was going to be the start of a repeating pattern. Then it matches else because it realized ELSE is not a repeating pattern, so it uses that uh, literally. And then the closing curly brace, well, it doesn't make sense if it's not closing a, a repeating pattern, so that is matched uh, literally. That's that's not really great, is it? Uh, because we we have like one of the curly brace match, not the other one. If I backslash a curly brace, because now curly braces have a special meaning by themselves in a extended regular expression, you can see that if I backslash them, then what I mean is just a basic curly brace. So be really careful about this. This is actually one of the the difference you have to to really memorize about uh, between. Um, extended and basic regular expression because that's going to, to cause you trouble otherwise. So all of those patterns are still usable the same way, uh, those patterns with uh, the curly brace, repeating patterns. Um, I can show you real quick also the grouping. So for example, if I have egrep uh, regular expression data file and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to reuse that. I'm going to group actually right, uh, else and a digit for example okay and I'm going to say I want to repeat that uh, let's say one two uh, n times okay well there we go so else followed by one digit okay so else two matches else five matches um, then I can repeat that pattern again so else five else five and s five matches the three else three also match you know this is this else followed by a digit pattern repeated three times uh, we can mix the numbers, okay, we already discussed about that, uh, here the digit is different every time, here we have one match, then we have a match on two repetitions of the same pattern, and so on and so forth. So if I want to do now what I did in my previous video, and uh, reuse that capturing group, okay, to say I want to repeat twice exactly the same, uh, the same first match that I got, uh, I can do that, definitely, okay, the capturing groups work the same way, is simply that we don't have to backslash those uh, those parentheses. Oops, sorry, I referred to um, uh, to a capturing group that doesn't exist. So I'm going to make it uh, working, uh, but it works exactly the same. Except that, uh, in my opinion, this is much more uh, easy on the eyes. It's uh, a lot easier to read. Okay. All right. So um, let's go back to our slide. So we talked about pretty much everything except alternatives. So let's take an example of that. Let's say that we want to say something like, um, I'm going to accept uh, else followed by a three or a five, okay? Three or a five, that's that simple. And I'm going to group, and this is something I recommend to do, every time you do an alternative, an alternative like this with uh, the pipe symbol, group this, um, this uh, sub-regular expression so that it's really clear that you are trying to alternate between 3 and 5. Okay? So whatever is on the left, whatever is on the right are two options, two possibilities, and everything should be neatly packaged in a capturing group. If I do this, you can see that I'm matching on the first line else 5. Uh, again, another match for else 5, another one for else 5. Same thing for the next line. Same thing for the third line, but this time I have different numbers. Uh, the fourth line shows you that we have really independent matches, so we match else 3 or else 5. Uh, each of them are, are an option. And there is there are no limits to how complicated those things can get. Okay, You could say I'm going to match uh, either these or something. Okay, so the external parentheses here are optional because um, because it's pretty much clear at this point what we want to match, but I'm still going to do it clean and add them. So you can say that this means that I'm trying to match either something, the word something by itself as a substring, 
or one of those else, you know, uh, followed by three and five. And I could use here, uh, I could say, for example, I want only to match when um, else followed by three or five is a word. So I could use <coughs> these symbols, or I could use backslash b. Okay, this is another uh, way to specify that we want uh, we want this to be delimited by word boundaries. The B stands for boundaries. So it's just yet another basic regular expression syntax that allows us to do that, uh, that I don't think I, m I mentioned up to now. Uh, so there we go. So uh, I can match something as a, as a string, substring, or else when it's uh, followed by three or five as a word. So if I was putting the B, the backslash B here, okay, outside, then that would mean I want to wa match a word. That word can be either something or else followed by the digit 3 or 5. So you can see how we can nest those, uh, those regular expressions there and uh, obtain things that are relatively uh, involved, okay? Um, especially with uh, the conditional here, the, the alternatives, or uh, we can do things that are quite powerful. Um, the syntax is still a little bit elaborate, okay? Reading a, a regular expression is always a challenge because uh, like I already mentioned, there's so much density in the information that's provided to you, but at least removing all those backslash that were superfluous uh, between uh, uh, in front of each parenthesis and in front of each curly brace makes it somewhat easier to read. And this is pretty much it. This is what I'm going to cover on uh, extended regular expression. Uh, since I mentioned backslash b, which was not actually uh, mentioned before, and that, and that is part of basic regular expression. Let me uh, let me go back here and add to uh, to this table here. I'm going to add the mention of backslash b as beginning or end of word of word. Okay, and I'm going to also mention here that we can use um, you know intervals like this or intervals like this, okay, which was mentioned in a previous video, but I want to add here that you can actually have multiple interval. However, this is not really um, this is not really recommended. So I'm going to move it uh, from here to this slide here where we discuss about um, a different pattern here. Um, it's not really recommended because you could actually uh, rewrite those patterns like so. Uh, and for the patterns that are, you know, within the alphabet generally, there are few locals that are going to cause you trouble. But if you are trying to express this pattern, uh, you have to make sure that you express it this way and not, you know, this way. Because this way is assuming that the uppercase letter are before the lowercase letter, the same way that this way is assuming that the lowercase letter are before the uppercase letter. So this is dependent on the local. So you don't want to, to get caught uh, doing this. But all of those over expression here, you can also uh, specify them like so. And obviously the hat symbol works. Just put the hat symbol after the opening um, square bracket and you can pretty much have the complement of that set, right? So all of these would be good examples here. There we go. Good example of how to uh, match this. The punctuation is not complete, okay? So this is uh, an example to take with a grain of salt. I just use like what? One, two, three, four, five punctuation symbols, there are more, okay? And same thing for the space and tabs. Uh, so, but it just gives you an idea of the equivalence here between those, uh, this way of using a basic regular expression uh, classes of character and the way to use um, the back, uh, the square bracket syntax to specify a set of character. All right, and that should wrap it up for this uh, video. Thank you again for listening.